Go with me to 2 Kings chapter 2. Because this, you know, one of the, one of the um, examples in Scripture is found in 2 Kings chapter 2. We all know the story. We know the portion of the story when Elijah is getting ready to be taken up to heaven and Elisha is following after him. We've probably all heard that preached. It's probably one of our favorite prophetic passages. Elisha comes and says, Lord, I pray that let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. How many have ever prayed, Lord, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me? Okay. And so what we have to understand is that we're in this season where we've been contending for a double portion. We've been contending against the thief to have a double portion of recovery. We've been contending in the spirit to receive a double portion mantle, which is both apostolic and prophetic, both the spirit of wisdom and revelation, both the sons of Issachar having an understanding of the times and knowing what to do. It is men and women. It is black and white and Asian and Hispanic. It is double when we work together. It is young and old, generations running and working together. It is a double portion. But here's what we've missed. We haven't read on in the story to see what Elisha did with the double portion. So I want you to go with me to 2 Kings 2.19. So Elisha, Elijah went up. His mantle came down. Elisha picked it up, went back to the water that Elijah had just parted and crossed. And he stood there, he rolled up the mantle, he took the mantle, and he stood there and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he struck the water and it parted. Listen, Elisha's first miracle was Elijah's last miracle. He picked up where Elijah left off. That's where Jesus said, greater things than I do, you're going to do. Because I go to the Father. You're going to pick up where I left off. How many understand that's a word for every one of us, not just the people sitting on the front row? Every one of us are supposed to be empowered legislators, empowered saints, empowered believers that can do all the stuff. Scripture says, covet the best gift. What's the best gift? The one you need to get the job done. Come on, if I need healing, don't say, oh, I really wish I could pray for you, but I don't have the gift of healing. Come here and let me smack you, okay? <laughs> Scripture says, it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers? It doesn't say these signs shall follow your pastors. These signs shall follow apostles. These signs shall follow uh, the, the great evangelists. No, no, no. It says these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You will cast out devils. These signs shall follow the deliverance team. Every believer. I want you to say I will cast out devils. You'll speak in new tongues. How many of you speak in new tongues? What's the next one? No, it's not. That doesn't come till the end. I think they'll drink anything deadly. Is that what's next? That's what my husband prays every time I cook for him. Okay, it's not my gift. I can eat anything deadly, Okay. You lay hand. What's that? Burnt offering. burnt offering. That's right. I honor him as the priest of our home. He he receives my burnt offerings. Okay, so they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How many understand this is for every one of us? See, we've got to break in this region a pulpit-driven Christianity. We've got to understand if we're going to see territories changed, it's not just what happens on a pulpit or down in an altar area in a church, but what happens is that we come together, we get an impartation, and we take it out there, and we start demonstrating out there the things that have been manifesting in here. So he received a mantle. How many of y'all got that fire tonight? We received. I got it, man. So now, look, look, at the, look at what he does. As soon as he crosses over, verse 19. Then the men of the city said to Elisha, please notice 
the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. Here's what they're saying to him. It looks like a beautiful place, but there is something rotten, something poison, and it is keeping us from producing. Our crops are dying, our flocks are dying, our children are dying. It's producing barrenness. And Elisha, the prophet, had an answer for the curse that was in the land. He said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. Now, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to just give you a few things that I, th I think that every one of us need to understand that when we're talking about territories, here's some things that we need to operate in. Number one, we need to operate in revelation. Every one of us, well, I'm not a prophet. Well, you can be prophetic. Every one of us should listen to the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. We should all know how to listen to the Holy Spirit and get strategies downloaded from heaven and an understanding about what we're dealing with. Revelation. What, what was the revelation about this city? Well, this was the city of Jericho. Do you realize that? Remember Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the wall came tumbling down? We all remember that story? But at the time that the walls came tumbling down, Joshua made a decree. He said, cursed is the man that rebuilds this city. Because it will be rebuilt on the, the foundation stone, will be, uh, will be laid on the blood of his eldest, and the gate will be set on the blood of his youngest. And for generations, Jericho lay in rubble because of that decree. Joshua legislated it. But during the reign of Ahab and Jezebel, a man named Hiel rose up, shook his fist in the face of God, and said, I will rebuild Jericho. And according to the pagan customs of the day, when it came time to set the, the cornerstone of the city, he set it on the blood of his eldest. Here's what that means. He took his eldest son out there and made him a sacrifice. He slit his son's throat, poured his son's blood into the cornerstone, and set the cornerstone. And when it came time, he did the same thing with the gate on his youngest. How many know God hates the shedding of innocent blood? And it brought a curse in the land. We've got to have revelation to see transformation. We've got to understand what we're dealing with. So you've got to get a revelation. Then, then look at what he did. It says, he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him, and he went out to the source of the water and cast the salt in there. This is not just revelation, it's mobilization. You know, there's bowls in heaven which are filled with incense which are the prayers of the saints. This is talking about prayer. This is that mobilization of prayer. Bring me a new bowl. Put salt in it. Who's the salt? We are. Every one of you carries a curse-destroying, yoke-breaking anointing. Come on, you're a yoke-breaker. You got the Holy Ghost inside of you? He's a yoke-breaker. He's a curse-destroyer. So when you go, you've got a curse-destroying anointing. We are the salt of the earth. Salt and light. And he goes out to the source of the water where the curse is operating. And he casts the salt in there. We've got to quit hiding out in our churches. We've got to understand God's raising up reformers that are going to go into education, go into the court systems, go into the financial district, go into the arts and media, go into the different areas that the enemy says, this belongs to my kingdom. And we go in there carrying the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We go in there with the word of the Lord in our mouth. We go in there carrying a curse-destroying anointing, and we get in there, and we begin to shift. Everybody say shift. You are anointed to bring a shift. He goes out to the source of the water. 
And he casts the salt in there. And he says, he makes a decree. Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From there, there will no longer be any death or barrenness. We decree that right now over New York City. That you're raising up salt and light in that city. And we decree the spirit of death that has ruled over that city. We decree that spirit of barrenness that has kept churches stagnated or compromised, that has kept the authority out of the mouths of the believers, the, the spirit that has brought a, a barrenness in the apostolic prophetic structures over that city, we decree right now, shift. Shift.